Hello and welcome. Very exciting topic today. Option pricing and coding an option pricing model with Python. In this video I'm going over some basics and we are also coding a simple call option price calculator in Python. Potentially I can cover a wide range of option related topics. So if you're interested in that let me know below. First off I've put in a timeline here which showcases how an option is working. An option in general is the right and not the obligation, just the right to buy or sell a certain underlying. In this case, I'm assuming the underlying is a stock, but could be for instance also a commodity or any other asset. In this example, we are considering a call option, that is the right to buy an asset for an agreed price K, in this example, 100 US dollar. This price is called the strike price. Now at any given time in the runtime of this option, you can buy this right, and this right has a price which is called the option premium. That is simply the price of the option, which you don't see on this slide, by the way. Finally, on the expiry date, you can decide if you exercise the option, meaning you buy the underlying for the agreed price, the strike price. From the time you bought this right to buy the stock for 100 US dollar until the expiry date of the option, the stock is moving, as you see here. In my example, the stock is rising and is at 120 US dollar on expiry. That would be a great outcome for the call option buyer because you have the right to buy an asset for the strike price, 100 US dollar, which is now worth 120 US dollar. So that would be a good deal for you. Let's dig a bit deeper into this. This here is a payoff diagram for a call option. What you see on the horizontal or x-axis is a range of prices for the underlying, so the stock. So stock is worth 80, stock is worth 90 and so on. The assumption is the same as before. Strike price is 100. Now as long as the stock price is below 100, this option wouldn't make sense to exercise simply because you don't want to buy something for 100 US dollar, which is worth less. But why is this line flat? and doesn't change with the underlying price in this area. As mentioned, you pay a premium, which is the option price. And as long as the stock price is below the strike, you wouldn't exercise the option, but still you would need to pay the premium, which is assumed to be one US dollar here. There's an important term for this situation, which is this option would be out of the money in this area. Now the next area, this dotted red line, which is the underlying is exactly worth the strike price, is still in the red zone. Think about it. You have the right to buy something for 100 US dollar, which is actually worth 100 US dollar, but you have to pay something for it to get it. That is the option premium. Overall, you would have made a loss. The situation when the strike equals the underlying price is called add the money. Now you break even when the underlying price is high enough to compensate the option premium. In this example, the option premium is one US dollar. Then you break even at an underlying price of 101 US dollar. And every price above that is making you more than happy. This situation that the underlying price is above the strike price is called in the money. To summarize, call. Out of the money, underlying is below the strike. At the money, underlying is the strike. In the money, underlying is above the strike. In the call option case. Let's jump back to the timeline again and think about which parameters could influence the price of that option. First of all, time value of money. The option buyer could invest his money, which he pays for the right to buy the asset, in a risk-free asset and make money in the form of interest out of that. So the time value of money has to be taken into consideration. How much the asset is moving should also be taken into account, as this has an influence on the probability of where the stock will be at expiry. Or in other words, the volatility has to be taken into account. 
But it's not only the time value of money and the volatility itself, but also the amount of time that is the time to maturity. And finally, you got the price of the underlying and the strike price. With these parameters and one widely used option pricing model, that is the Black Scholes model, you can calculate the price or premium of an option. So let's switch over to Python to calculate a call option price. Okay, so I put up the Black Scholes formula for a European call option here. Side note, difference European and American option is simply European option you can exercise at expiry. American option you can exercise during the whole runtime of the option. Black Scholes is covering European options. Now, this formula is giving you the price of a call option at time t. I won't go into details why this formula is how it is. That would be a whole own video, which I'm open to do. I'm just not doing it in this video. So let's take a look at the price of a call option. That is the current price of the underlying asset. So simply the stock price times the cumulative distribution function of the standard normal distribution of D1. D1 is defined as the log of current price in relation to the strike price plus risk free rate plus volatility squared divided by 2 times time to maturity divided by volatility times square rooted time to maturity. So take that, take the cumulative distribution function on that and then subtract the strike price times e to the power of minus risk free rate times time to maturity times again cumulative distribution function of d2 and d2 is d1 minus volatility times squared time to maturity. Another side note here. This one is telling you sigma is the volatility of the assets returns, standard deviation of the assets returns. Just as a practical note here, you usually don't take the volatility of the assets return, so you take a so-called implied volatility instead of a historical volatility as you know it from, for instance, calculating a sharp ratio of a portfolio. So you take the implied volatility instead of the historical volatility in practice. For now, we are taking an assumed volatility anyway, so it doesn't matter for now, but just keep that in mind. Okay, so let's calculate a call option price. Now, let's just take our assumptions. So, the current price of our asset is 100. The risk free rate, I'm just taking the rough t rate here. So, I'm just assuming I'm in America now and I'm taking the American risk free rate, which is roughly 4%. I think it's 4.1 something currently. So, you can look that up. Uh, just uh, check a look, take a look at the 10-year T-bill rate. That is the most common proxy for risk-free rate. So I'm just taking 4% here. Then I need a strike price, K. So it's called X here in this formula. K is mostly used for strike price. So I'm sticking to K here. Strike is 100. As a recap, this is an add the money option in this case. And then time to maturity, very important remark here. This time to maturity, which is the time to maturity of the option in years, has to be aligned with the risk free rate and the volatility. And when you take the risk free rate on a yearly base, which I'm doing here because 4% is per annum, you have to take the time to maturity in years. So I'm assuming the option <coughs> expires in one month. So I'm taking 30 days in relation to 365 days. Or rather 366 as we have a leap year here, but I'm just keeping it as simple as possible here. So option expires in 30 days here. In this case, you have to set it into relation to the days in a year. If you work with yearly rates here. Same logic for volatility. So if I'm defining my volatility here, which is my sigma, I have to take the annualized volatility. 
So I'm just taking an assumed analyzed volatility of 25% here. And these are already all the assumptions I need to calculate uh, the price of a call, a call price taking these assumptions. Now let's define D1 here. D1 is the log. So we need some libraries actually to, to do that. So let's import math because we need some mathematical functions such as the log, square root and so on. We also need the cumulative distribution function. I mean, as a, a challenge or as a task, you can calculate it from scratch or you can uh, you can write your own function. I'm just importing it from scipy here. So scipy stats import norm that has a CDF, a cumulative distribution function. So that is the easier way here. Okay, now D1 is the log, so math log of S divided by K. So current price divided by strike price plus risk free rate R plus sigma, which is vol to the power of two divided by two times the time to maturity, which is T. That also we are just using parentheses here, divided by sigma again, so vol times the squared maturity. I'm just taking it like this here. So just just the square root. So just as a reminder, so you know what I'm doing here. If you take math square root of 81, you're getting nine, but you're also getting nine if you take it to the power of one and a half math recap. So I'm taking that, you can also take that one if you feel more com comfortable with that. That is already it for D1. So we have D1 calculated and D2 straightforward D1 minus sigma times again the squared time to maturity. And with that, we can calculate our call price. And again, call price. So we can just take S times, and now we need the cumulative distribution function of D1. So just um, S times norm CDF of D1. Then normal distribution, 0, 1, minus, and then x times, so k strike times uh, e function to the power of minus r times maturity, so simply minus r times t, and then times n so cumulative distribution function again of D2. So again, norm CDF of D2, say one. And that would yield the price of that option, which is 3.01312 here. So how can we cross check if that's right? We can just, for instance, take an online option price calculator, put in our numbers, which I already did here. So we have 3.021, 3.013. So I must have messed up somewhere here. So let's quickly go through it. I uh, probably need to take a parenthesis here. Yeah, sorry for that. So you also need a parent pair of parentheses here. So this one is giving you a 3.0211, which is exactly the price of a call option here. So if you want to wrap that into a function, 
so dev call price or whatsoever just take r s k t vol or sigma you can also use and then you can just copy paste here d1 d2 and then return the result of this one here and then call price of r s k t vol you're getting a call price if that is, is changing now so let's say we take an in the money option so 80 it would give us 20 point two six here so as k should be 80 here so if we execute that again we're getting 20 point two six s here and yeah that's already it so what you can do what i find quite interesting or what i find a good case to apply what i just showed you is take an option chain here for instance from finance yahoo or yahoo finance and then take a look at for instance this one here so that is an uh, in the money call on google or alphabet whatsoever with a strike of 80 and if you put in all numbers and take the implied volatility as i just said instead of the historical volatility and put that into the option price calculator you should get close to the option price here, right? So close because I don't know what's the exact assumptions here of this one. I don't even know if that is black golds, but even if it's another option pricing model, you should get close to these numbers here, All right? So make the test, I already did. You're getting very close to it. And yeah, that's it for this video. As said, there is a lot more to cover here a lot of super interesting stuff so let me know if you're interested in that and i thank you very much for watching and i'm looking forward to seeing the upcoming videos bye bye